party people, what's happening? It's your boy, Naughty and Sans, here for another very exciting episode. Well, this one's not exciting, but it is useful. Useful episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. Those of you that know my videos may know the Black Strobe Effect video from a long time ago where Ozzy Sofa, my buddy Ozzy Sofa, asked me a question about how to do black strobes, and he came through in the clutch yet again with another question about the user interface of Premiere. He sent me an Instagram message and sounded very panicked. It says, Ian, I undocked my preview panel and closed it, and now I can't seem to get it back. Please help. User interface problems are the worst. But not to fear. Your boy Naughty and Sans has got you covered. Everyone at some point in time has closed something or exited out of something or minimized something and they don't know how to get it back. Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017 user interface tutorial starts now. Open up Premiere because we're getting started. All right, Premiere is open and not a whole lot going on right now. We're just gonna be taking a look at the user interface and how glorious it may or may not be to you. We're gonna start from the top down. Up here, you have a couple tabs that you can select. You can select assembly, editing, color, effects, audio, graphics, libraries, blah, blah, blah. And as you can see, as you click on each one of them, the entire user interface changes. And these user interfaces are the ones that Adobe just gives you right off the bat. But these can all be edited, every single one of them. In Ozzy Safa's case, what he did was he actually closed a panel and he didn't know how to get it back. All you have to do is right click on the panel that you were using and click reset to save layout. And what that will do is it will automatically put everything back where it went before, out of the box, like you started. I personally like using the stock editing user interface. I don't like anything fancy. I don't need all the bells and whistles. I just need the basics, people. Basic editing user interface, that's my jam. But if you wanted to get fancy, all of Premiere is modular. So if I wanted to take this project uh, bin over here where I have some footage and that kind of stuff, I can drag that up into here. And you can tell what you want to do based on the colors that are going on in here. So if I drag it right into the middle, it will just open right in the middle and, and bring a little tab up here. If I drag it over to the left-hand side, it will create a double window there. Same with the right-hand side. So if I drag it to the bottom, it will come up here in the bottom. And you can customize this however you want. But in the very likely event that you screw something up and you put something where it's not supposed to go, you always have the eject button, which is right-click, reset to save layout, and you're back to square one. Boom, Ozzy Safa fixed your problem. Let's move on. Source window. Now this is the window that you will basically use whenever you have a bunch of footage. So if you double click on footage, it will appear up here in your source window. And this is where you will scrub through your footage and you will do all, everything that you need to do. You can set your ins and outs. You can drag it down onto the timeline, etc., etc. You'll do all from the source window. If you right click on it, it will bring up a bevy of options. And we're not gonna go through all of them today. Just know that they're here. From the source window, you can come down here and hit M on the keyboard and set markers if you're going through footage and you're just like labeling takes. That is very useful. You can pop over to effect controls, which obviously will affect the clip that you have down on your timeline, where you have your scale, position, and rotation data, all your keyframes, all your opacity, all that fun stuff. The audio clip mixer, where you can uh, just mix the audio down very basically here, and all the metadata for your clip. So it tells you the frame rate, it'll tell you the frame size, it'll tell you how long it is, all that fun, nerdy data stuff that usually people don't pay attention to. Moving on over to the program window, this window is where the final product will be shown. So this is actually what's reflecting in your timeline where the source window over here is just reflecting what clips you're bringing into preview to then bring onto the timeline. But up here is where your final timeline will be rendered. You have a couple different options here. Uh, fit will automatically fit the video to the size of the window and it's too small. You can come up here and click fit and it will automatically scale depending on if you're raising or lowering your timeline settings. Down here, you got a bunch of custom buttons like add marker, set your ins and outs, that kind of stuff. If you ever wanna add buttons to this bar, all you have to do is click on this little plus icon down here for the button editor and you can uh, hover over and it will tell you exactly what the buttons do and you can just drag and drop it right down onto your button timeline and then when you hit it, it will automatically initiate whatever button you put on. I put down here the safe margins tool which will actually show you title safe and action safe if you're doing stuff for like television, doesn't necessarily apply to internet videos. I can go outside the action safe parameters and still be action safe. Down here you have your timeline, pretty self-explanatory. And then down here we have our project window, media browser, libraries, info, effects, etc., etc. The whole point of this video is to let you know that Premiere is modular. You can set it up, tear it down, move it however you want, whatever works best for you, whatever you're comfortable with. If you wanna work with some sort of weird workflow where like the audio meter is full screen on the right hand side you, you can do whatever you want, just move it. But if you mess up, hit the eject button, reset to save layout and start over. Or if you find something that works for you, you can set it as a custom layout and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. I'm just gonna mess this thing up, like no, no harm, no foul. Okay, this looks great. So say I wanna set this as a layout. I'm gonna come up here to editing, 
save as new workspace and I'm gonna label it whatever I want. So super clean, yeah, that defines this workspace. And then it will pop up up here amongst all your other custom stock interfaces. It will be down here at the end. And then you can always right click on it, go to edit workspaces, and you can drag this up to the top so that it actually sits first in your bar instead of last. So you can customize it that way as well. There's a lot of hidden things inside the Premiere Pro user interface that I can't possibly cover in one video. It would just be way too much information. You guys would get bored, I would get bored, I would freak out, you'd freak out. It's not gonna be good for anybody. As with most of my videos, I recommend going in and just playing around with stuff, move stuff around, explore the options that are inside all of the user interfaces. You may come across something that works for you that you think is really cool that you can then and save as a custom user interface layout to then go forward and do amazing projects and do amazing things because your user interface is now immaculate. The point of this video was to give you a fast and quick rundown of the user interfaces and that they can be modular and that you can save your own and how to get back to zero in Ozzy Safa's case. He closed a panel, he freaked out, he messaged me on Instagram, didn't know what to do. I came through with the video and saved his life and saved your life. Well, thank you for watching. My name is Nadi Sands and this is Learn How to Edit Stuff. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. If you have a question, you want a question answered, hit me up on Twitter at Naughty and Sans or Instagram at Naughty and Sans. I'll get back to you. I'll make a video especially for you. Subscribe. Check out the video. I'll catch you next time.